Okay, so this first question uh, in, in my usual style is going to be a bit vague, but even more vague than usual. I've been trying to formulate uh, 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 this idea, and I still don't know what word, what term to put to it, but one term I've heard thrown around a little bit that I'm a little iffy on is the term scientism. And the way I'm hearing this term scientism used sometimes uh, is uh, as a critique of what I'm going to call faux science, the listen to the science people uh, on this issue or that. And obviously, as, uh, as a person who's a believer in the value of science and the value of the scientific method and the value of reason, to, to me, science and that sense of scientism is awesome. But the idea of listen to the science, which really means listen to the authorities, which really means listen to a narrow scope of the anointed authorities, which really means listen to the politicians and the ideologues and not the scientists. I, do, do you have some thoughts on this and what sort of, what's the right terminology to use? What's the right way of framing this? Sure, I mean, look, I, I think scientism is an anti-concept and a package deal. It's, it's a bad term and I would never use it. Um, it, it. It's packaging real scientific knowledge and real scientific expertise. And, you know, this hatred of elites, this hatred of expertise is absurd and ridiculous. Now, granted, elites and experts have betrayed us established in the back as, the, as an American people in an anti-freedom, anti-liberty, anti-capitalism. So I understand where it's coming from. But whatever culture replaces the existing culture, whatever we, we get to something better, we're going to have experts and elites, I hope, who are good at what they do understand because not everybody can be a philosopher. Not everybody can be a scientist. Not everybody can be an epidemiologist. Not everybody can be you know, a physicist, some people, that's their expertise, and those of us who are not are going to rely on them to an extent. Now, scientism is supposedly this idea of viewing science as a religion. But does anybody really view science as a religion? Well, no, but science by definition is the opposite of religion. Science, if it's really science, it's about facts and evidence and experimentation and testing and so on. So science is science. Science doesn't tell you necessarily what to do. It tells you what is. So the, 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 the package deal is the good, which is science, a respect for science, respect for fact, respect for evidence, respect for knowledge, and this idea that you have to accept the should that the experts claim comes out of that science. But you don't have to accept that. And indeed that should is not science. That should is morality, it's political science, it's politics, it's whatever it happens to be. It's not science, right? So the, uh, the, the mixture of the two of this uh, religious attitude towards, uh, you know, right now, this idea that we have to do what Fauci tells us, right? No, you don't. But you know what? You're an idiot if you don't listen to Fauci. If you don't at least take into account what he's saying, you might disagree with him. You might listen to other experts. But he is a scientist. He has worked in the field 30-something years. He has some knowledge. Unfortunately, he's in a political position. That's sad. I'd rather there not be these political positions. But, uh, it, it, you know, and but you don't. Scientism is anything Fauci says is the word of God, but that's not science. So it shouldn't be called scientism. That's authoritarianism. That's respect for authorities, not respect for authorities, but blind obedience to authorities. So it's mixture of the positive science and the negatives of blind authoritarianism or blind adherence or blind following of somebody. And that mixture is a package deal. And it's the purpose of the package deal is not to obliterate blind obedience. The purpose of the package deal is to obliterate science. Yeah. 
Exactly. And, and I would layer in another aspect to this too, because I completely agree with all that. The, the other aspect is, <clears throat> excuse me, the, 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 you, the idea of people who are, say, in media, who are not necessarily scientists, who are starting with their own preconceived notions and saying that, that scientists agree with my idea. So they're essentially, it's sort of like priests saying, you know, I speak for God. You know what I mean? I speak for science. Uh, that's that's the part that seems to me even more insidious is the not scientists who are telling you to listen to, to science by which they mean listen to them. Yeah, but I don't know, because because you need those journalists, right? I mean, yes. part of the you need the journalists to translate the science into language that we can understand and to apply it or, or, or show its relevance to our lives. So I don't think they I, yes, they are science. They are journalists who are using this to bring about a, 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 a particular agenda, right? A social agenda, a philosophical agenda. And that's a problem. But the solution is not to call them scientism. The solution is to call them for what they really, what they are, propagandists, socialists, whatever you, you want to call them. But don't, don't um, muddy the term science. And exactly. notice that this primarily comes from the right from people who don't believe in evolution. Yeah. From people who don't believe in science, who are skeptical about science. And, and look, not believing in evolution at this point is close to flat earthers, right? I mean, there's enough evidence now that it's... It's not just a theory. It's not, well, I mean, it's... I mean, yeah, it is a theory, but it's not it's just a theory. theory. With, with, you know, tons of evidence, right? Um, it's a theory that's been proven. So it's... Um, for the right to accuse people of being scientism of scientism, given their religiosity, is ridiculous. And the 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 term does not refer again to the religious nature of the those who adhere to science. It undermines the whole concept of science itself. Right. Yeah, I'm still stuck looking for a term for I, I guess what I would regard as charlatanism. But you're right. I, it, I don't like the call term. Call it bad science. Call it charlatan charlatans call it yeah. people using science for political agenda call yeah. it wrong call it false <laughs> but don't mix it into a new term first of all we don't need it but a new term that actually undermines the good which is science science is a good doesn't mean all scientists are good it means science is a good unequivocally a good and if for anything that's there is no scientism other than the greatness of science. And people misuse it as Marx did calling, his, calling it scientific socialism. That's a misuse of the term science, but that doesn't undermine science. It's their misuse, call them out on the fact that they're misusing it. Um, you shouldn't take science on faith, but you know, most of us, most of us don't have the knowledge of all the details that go into particular scientific theories. I mean, you know, I know that quantums behave in a certain way. I kind of have done the math, but I haven't run the experiments myself. I don't know that those experiments are actually, I mean, firsthand are actually real, but you know what? I kind of trust the scientists and I know enough that I believe them. It's not validated if, like it was if I'd run the experiments, so, you know, don't trust the scientists on faith, sure, but don't expect to really have firsthand knowledge of everything in science that you claim to agree with. I mean, how many of you, how many of us really understand Newton's laws of motion? Even though we all agree with Newton's laws of motion, I don't know, I don't know anybody, anybody, or yeah, as, as I, I said, said before, before you know, uh, uh, Darwin's evolution. I mean, really, really, really know all the evidence and run down and can prove it. Fewer. Yeah, I, I've never been to space. The Earth could be flat, right? <laughs> Just, kidding. Yeah, Just kidding. No, let me tell you, I've uh, <laughs> somebody who's been on a somebody who's actually uh, as somebody who's actually traveled around the world, <laughs> flown around the world. I can tell you, it's round. Uh, yeah, no I, edges, I, I, no flats. I, I, I flew. I flew to the edge of the Earth and. <laughs> 
didn't right. follow up. So yeah, just, just anyway, so, but point to your so, point. You, you, we obviously can't experience all all of the the world and all the things that. No, are- I mean of all the people out there, I believe scientists more than pretty much anybody else. Now that doesn't mean I agree with exactly, them. and I certainly don't oh. agree with their prescriptions. Is it just me for what should, should be, be right. done? And one has to be careful in terms of what one calls science, but. And science is being corrupted and is being corrupted and is becoming more corrupt as time goes on by philosophy. So one becomes more skeptical about what the scientist is saying. But that ex- that does not excuse creating this new anti-concept called scientism, which is meant to undermine the good. All right. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Matt. Well, Jim, I wanted to validate kind of your question i have half of my questions are kind of of that same vein because that's that kind of feeling is something that's been irking me for you know the past year and i love what i've the science because i think it really gets at truth and and objectivity and the and capability to increase production and so many of the you know marvelous things that that are exist uh you know in the world today but are not just uh, you know, natural events or weren't there in the past. Um, so one of those that's kind of related to that, uh, I think is, you know, like when it comes to not understanding quantum theory or, or specific things, but believing it, I'm reading, uh, OPAR right yep. now. I'm like halfway through it and I definitely do not understand a lot. Like I get some things from it, but I'm very far from saying, oh, I totally get this, but I still believe it even when I don't understand, but I don't think of myself as somebody who has faith in things. So, you know, it's not faith. And I also don't just because I don't want to just say, Oh, it's from an authority that I trust. So I believe it, but it kind of is that, but I consider it to be because he's an expert in the field and has dedicated himself to studying it. And there's things in mathematics that I don't understand. So, and, you know, in, in hard science, so I'm not a philosopher. So, just along those lines of, uh, I want, I, I do believe I don't truly know it for myself. I don't feel like I'm second-handed, but, um, you know, I somewhat do just defer to the expert on that. Yeah. I mean, we certainly have to, I mean, if you go to the doctor and he gives you a diagnosis, you can check it up online, which you should, you should, you should verify it. You should see that it makes sense to you, but you can't replace a doctor. I mean, you can get a second opinion or third opinion, but at the end of the day, some expert is going to tell you what you have. And if you need surgery, some expert is going to perform the surgery. You're not going to do it to yourself. You know, thank God that you're not, right? Because you couldn't. So I love experts. I love the division of labor society. I love the division of labor. So part of the question is how do you validate an expert? And how do you come to trust? How do you come to... um, not have faith in, but believe an expert. And and partially it has to do with his credentials, you know, his training and things like that. And partially it has to do with, particularly when it comes to philosophy, it has to do with the things you do understand, the things you can validate in your life. Do they make sense? Do they integrate? And then do the things you don't quite understand, do they integrate with the things you do understand? Or are they in conflict with them, right? If they're in conflict with them, then don't believe them until you resolve the conflict. But I kind of call this the, uh, the smell test. Yeah, but it's, it's in, in philosophy, it's deeper than the smell test because you have to actually go through the integration. So you're reading Opa and you're saying, I kind of get this stuff on epistemology. I don't completely get it, but everything else he says makes sense to me. And I do think I get it. And it seems to integrate with the epistemology stuff. I'll have to come back to it later to really get into it. But, and I'm going to accept it now because it integrates with everything else and it fits. It doesn't create conflict. If it creates conflict, you have to resolve it. Um, And at whatever level of depth you want to go into something, it can't be contradictory. I mean, if you remember, um, Rand defines logic as the art of non-contradictory identification. So it, it, if it's logical, it means it didn't contradict existing knowledge. It didn't contradict existing conclusions. And if it did, and it might, 
you have to resolve the contradiction. That's on you. That's what reason requires, demands, right? That you follow logic. So, um, but there's certainly a sense in which, I, you know, I don't know fully um, all the, uh, the entire objectivist epistemology and, and it's, and, and Ayn Rand, you know, Ayn Rand only got to a certain point epistemologically. She could have gone deeper and, and probably would have if she'd have another 10 years, right? She was studying uh, mathematics at the, you know, before she died because she thought that had relevance into kind of some of the questions she was still asking about epistemology and wanted to go deeper. So it, it, this is a, the deep, deep topics here that we're not going to know. We're never going to know. But what you do know, do you, does it fit? And, and here, integration is so crucial. And then is there anything in your experience that contradicts it? Concrete or through integration? The um, mental and model, then, if, and if then I over, may, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and then over time, I, I, I think you make it yours by constantly going back to those issues you might not, particularly in philosophy, that you don't fully understand. And, and re, re, you know, uh, Leonard calls it the spiral of knowledge, right? Going back to them and bringing your new experiences to them and saying, okay, is it still non-contradictory? Is my knowledge still a whole? Is my knowledge of other parts of the philosophy still consistent with, with this? So, um, but yes, you, 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 you cannot know everything, right? You know, in a first-handed absolute sense, you've, uh, reality is too rich and too diverse and too, um, there's too much there. That's part of the division of labor and we should embrace that. The mental so model I tend to use, uh, if, if I may, is that this idea of building credibility that if, uh, if somebody introduces me to something that they say, well, this is science and uh, this is uh, very well understood. If, if it's something I don't understand, I'm, I'm going to suspend my any disbelief. I'm going to go look at the, the sources, get as much as I can and see how credible does this person seem? How much does, like what Yaron was saying, how much does it comport with what I already know, what, what science already seems well established? If they're consistent with, uh, with everything, then I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And that's what the, that's how experts earn credibility with me. Matt? Yeah, so I think I can accept it and let it go without being faith by, if it integrates with uh, what I already know, if it's non-contradictory and um i mean if you have reason yeah. to trust this authority right and i believe it could trust be if thing. i were to investigate it i believe it could be proven out then yes. it's not revelation or reliance on authority even if i don't actually go do that investigation i think if i pass those three those three tests i can just leave it at that that's right that's right yeah, I mean, think about so studying a new topic in school. Your assumption is the teacher has no reason to mislead you. Um, the topic's probably true, but she might be misleading you, right? Like on global warming or something. And, and later, if you find evidence that she was misleading you, then you would reevaluate maybe everything she taught you, right? Um, but uh, even then, some of it is probably true and some of it's false and you'd have to figure it out. But at the time you're sitting there, she's the authority. You, you're accepting, I wouldn't say it's by faith, I, you, you're, you're trusting her a certain level of belief. Once you discover a contradiction, everything's open and you, you have to reevaluate everything. Just like if you discover, oh no, this doctor turns out he's selling uh, snake oil on the side, you're not going to return to him. You're not going to trust his diagnosis of you in the future. I suspect that that is part of what Matt may be getting at here. And I'm sorry, I, I got cut out uh, my video loss, but um, is I get beaten over the head all the time by people who are like, who are you? You're not a scientist. You're not credentialed. I'm like, you're right, but point to resources. Uh, at, but they're, they're trying to invalidate me just because I don't have uh, some credential. And I don't think that's valid. And I don't accept that as an argument. Well, it, it depends. I know a lot of people who are who are amateur um, scientists who have no clue, and yep. and and the creden credentials matter. So credentials I, matter. I, I'm not one who ignores credentials. I think credentials matter. They don't matter for everything. I know lots of people credential to a complete complete nonsense, but credentials do matter. It means you've focused and you've developed a certain expertise in a field. You might again, you might turn out to be wrong about everything but they're not irrelevant to the question of whether I'll listen to you or not. All right, 
what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>